What's good YouTube, Neon Nexus here, bring you a new deck profile, a new budget deck profile. I seem to be doing a lot of budget decks lately. This is my Heraldic Beast deck. Now this deck is exceedingly cheap to build. Uh, some of the extra deck cards may cost you a bit depending on how far you want to go. But the actual main deck itself, I think I spent like £13 just getting the core. You're probably going to spend like maximum fifteen pounds getting some, if you include the bits from World Superstars, which you need to make the deck work. But yeah, you can make this deck on a budget, just the main, probably on twenty, thirty quid, easy. Um, so yeah, let's get into the deck profile. First of all, we've got the monsters. We got three, Heroic Beast Leo. What Leo does is when he's sent to the graveyard. He adds you a Heraldic Beast monster to the hand. And when he's normal summoned, he destroys himself in the end phase. And he's a 2k beat stick. Now that's nothing to turn your nose up at. He's your big recruiter for the entire deck. Then you've got three Heraldic Beast Abba Conway. What Abba Conway does is if you have another Abba Conway in the graveyard, you can banish one. And then add a Heraldic Beast from the graveyard to your hand. So you can recycle that Leo. And it's a wind, which makes it very important. Then we've got three Amphis Baner. Amphis Baner is basically <laughs> our nuttiest part of the deck because you can discard one Heraldic Beast monster from your hand to special summon him. So you can discard that Leo to special summon him, then you get your Leo effect and you another Heraldic Beast monster that you can normal summon and overlay with this guy. So many consistent plays. Also, I haven't really used this effect, but it's helpful for getting out of Delint to gin locks and stuff, you can uh, discard a Heroic Beast monster from your hand to give him an 800 attack point boost, it puts him on to 2500. That is really cool. So yeah, we've got three of him, and it's a wind, so it can make certain things in the extra deck. Uh, we've got one twin headed falcon, uh, you banish this from the graveyard and you target one Exceed monster that has no Exceed materials and you attach two Heroic Beast monsters from your graveyard to that Monster as Xyz materials. Once again, abusing the Leo. Then we've got one Unicorn. Unicorn's sort of a okay meh sort of card. Uh, you banish Unicorn from the graveyard to special summon a um, Psychic Xyz monster from your graveyard to the field. But its effects are negated, so it's okay. And then we've got our um, key combo piece three Kage to Kage. Uh, Kage Kage, when you normal summon a monster, you can special summon Kage to Kage from your hand. It's the only way you can be summoned. And then I play two Summoner Monk. Now, today, I did not see Summoner Monk. I did not play Summoner Monk. I did not need Summoner Monk. Uh, Monk is a good card, yeah. But there's too much effect negation. Phoenix Chains, Breakthrough Skills, Fet Veilers, etc. And you do go Neg 1. So... I'm going to be changing, probably, these two uh, Sonder Monks out for these guys. Two Mathematician. Uh, mathematician, when it's normal sun, you send one monster, one level four or lower monster, rather, from your deck to the graveyard. So you can send your Leo and get that plus first turn. And uh, Yeah, you can't overlay with it and you don't synchro in this deck. But it just gets your plays going first turn, and when it's strong about you draw a card, so that's pretty legit if you ask me. So that's it for the monsters. Onto the spells, and we run quite a considerable amount of spells. Um, we've got the best spell in the entire deck three advanced heraldry art. What this card does is you target two. Heroic Beast Monsters in your graveyard, special summon them, and then immediately after this card resolves, XE summon using those monsters. Now, it's essentially been classed as a miracle fusion for XEing for Heroic Beasts. Um, that's true, but what happens is you special summon the monsters, yes, but then they can't play TT or Botanist, they have to chain it to the summon of the XE's monster being summoned because. Either they have a way to negate this being activated, or they have to activate to the XCs being summoned. Because 
this card is still trying to resolve when the two monsters hit the field. And it completely resolves once the Exceed monster is summoned. So yeah, this card is just so good. Then we've got two Heraldry Reborn. Essentially, all it is is Monster Reborn for Heraldric Beast Monsters. That's all it does. I run it at two instead of three because I think three is too much because we already run the quote unquote Miracle Fusion of the deck. And since our deck relies on the graveyard and getting shit into the graveyard, I think that two is perfectly fine. Don't think you need three. Then I ran two um, Augmented Heraldry. What this does is it's a field spell. Your opponent cannot target Psychic Exceeds type monsters uh, with spell and trap card effects. Once per turn, you can discard one Heraldic Beast monster from your hand. And then you can search your deck and add one Heraldry spell or trap from your deck to your hand. So that adds your Heraldry Reborn, it adds your Advanced Heraldry Art. But for the rest of the turn, even if this card leaves the field, you can only summon Heraldic Beast or Psychic type Exceeds monsters. So um, you're locked into your Heraldic Exceeds if you want to Exceed. But it's pretty good. I like it. I'm not sure how I feel about it at two. Three is definitely too much in my opinion. Um, it's good. But obviously that limitation of only being Heraldic Beast Monsters. <laughs> it's what makes it an okay card. And not an amazing card. We've got one pot of Dichotomy. Because we've got various different types. We've got Dragons. We've got Winged Beasts. We've got Beasts. Uh, the Extra Decks. We've got all kind of stuff. So... It's nice to recycle stuff into the deck because you can dump your shit in the graveyard quite fast. Um, and if you're recycling your Exceeds, it's essentially a 3 plus 2. Yes, you can't conduct your Battle Phase that turn, but you've drawn two cards into the deck. I like it. One Foolish Burial, so you can send that Leo to the graveyard or your Abercromways or whatever. Just deck thinning. Uh, we play one Red Geki, one Dark Hole, one Book of Moon... Two Forbidden Lance with the two MST. Now the reason why I chose to go two and two is because this deck can be quite fragile to its XC summons. If you don't get that first XC summon off, you can't always have a backup play. Um, and I thought, since I'm running Monk, and whenever I play Monk in my Volcanics, it always gets Fiendish Chained, I play Lance. Um, Lance actually helped out quite a bit today. MST was so-so. So... -so, so I might play around with that ratio a bit, but Lance was definitely a good card to add today. On to the traps. We play two Miraphos, three Fiendish Chain, one Bombless, one Emptiness, and one Warning. Um, traps were okay, didn't really have any problem with the trap lineup. Sure, there's other things I could run, but you know. Um, I could run Ring, I could run Kapulse, I could run TT, but these are okay for now. And I probably could run more traps if I cut down on my spells, but I really like my spell lineup. And I really don't want to cut down on my monsters. So, that's all pretty gravy. Uh, moving on to the Exceeds now. We have one Lightning Shidori. Upon summon, you target one face down card, one set card on the field, and return it to the bottom of the deck. And then you can detach the material to target a face up card on the field and return it to the top of the deck, I think. Uh, then you got two Haradri Patriarch. Uh, what this card does is that uh, when the opponent controls two or more monsters with the same name, you can detach the next use material. To target one of those monsters and destroy all other monsters on the field with the same name. But that effect's kind of irrelevant. Uh, the effect you really kind of care about in this deck is when it's sent to the graveyard. Doesn't matter how it's sent to the graveyard. As long as it's sent to the graveyard. You can send two Haradric Beast monsters from your deck to the grave. So that's your Leo, your Abercromways, your Twin-Headed Eagles, etc. It just sets up so many plays. 2-2 two -two attack, 2-2 two -two defense. Um, it's okay. You know, it can set up plays. It's not a particularly aggressive card, but better than nothing. Next we play one number eight Heraldric King um, Genome Heritage. 
What this guy does is you target one Xyz monster on the field, you copy its effects, you copy its attack, and then you reduce that Xyz monster down to zero attack points. And then once you've copied its effects and stuff, and the monster's on zero, you can run over it for that Xyz monster's original attack points. Say, I don't know, um, an Honor Arc, for instance. Uh, Genome Heritage will become 2100 Beat Stick, which you can detach its Xyz materials to nab a monster in attack mode. So, it is a really good card. Um, if you're staring down a particularly nasty Xyz monster that you just can't get out, get around. So, um, mine is currently in the post, so I had to borrow one off one of the guys at Locals today. Shout outs to uh, Eddie Chan for letting me borrow this. You're a star. Uh, one King of the Feral Imps, just to search out our Kage to Kage's. Um, it's nice having an extra deck rotor, if you like. Uh, it's 2300, so there's nothing to turn your nose up at. We've got one Ragnar Zero, uh, just situational purposes. Uh, then we've got one Honor Arc for Omnon Noms. One Castells for spin-ins. One go get samurai for double attacks because <laughs> I did use this today and it did come in handy because uh, the amount of times that you go into your extra deck and you can make this and run over shit and then like get a direct attack in or you can just use it to clear the board for your bigger monsters to attack. It's a really good card. Um, I'm surprised this card's still like 99 pence on eBay but I would recommend picking these guys up. They are amazing. Uh, one extra time for board clearance. One Lavalvo chain to set up plays. You can send your Leo to the graveyard, send your Arab Conways, etc. One Dugusto Emerald. This guy helped me out so much. It recycled so much shit. Um, yeah, enough said. One Dweller. Didn't make it. Uh, one Cowboy for game. And one Rhapsody and Berserk. Okay, on to the side deck. Side deck today, I ran three Artifact Lancia purely because we cannot run Imperial Iron Wall because it fucks up with our plays. So, stopping the opponent from banishing for a turn is a lot better than nothing. Um, one Twister and one MST because I'm main decking two MSTs, not three. And I wanted outs to things like Mistake, Vanity, Skill Drain, etc. Played two Master Restrict. Uh, Necros, Quillies, Infernoids, um, two Shadow Mirror for Dark Decks, two Mind Crush because it's best card of the format, two Chaos Trap Hole for Light and Dark Decks. Now, Chaos Trap Hole, there's a lot of misconception about this card. It acts like Thunder King. You pay 2000 to stop either the normal summon or special summon of a Light or Dark Monster, but the special summon has to be an inherent special summon, e.g., Exceed, Synchro, or Cyber Dragon like effect. So you can't use this against Monster Reborns and Call the Haunteds and shit like that. And then two Light Mirror for all light based decks. So yeah, uh, that was my side deck today. Um, side deck was alright. Um, you can't side deck anything like mistakes and stuff because that really conflicts with your uh, plays. So if you've got any side deck suggestions for this type of deck that searches a fuck ton and special summons a fuck ton, be my guest. I am all ears, guys. Until next time, I've been Neon Nexus, and I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.